Did you go kicking and screaming to do an event or were you like, all right, I'll try anything? It was a big learning curve for me because in this business, when I first joined, I figured that business would come to me. Mm. Um, And I think that's a common misconception with a lot of new realtors. Business does not always come to you. You have to go out and get it. So I took the class and I didn't seem to implement anything the first time around because I figured I'm just learning right now. Like I need to be doing all the other things that new agents do. And then one day I had a conversation with Nicole and she said, you need to do this. Like you're in this class, you're getting valuable knowledge. Let's do it. And I was like, okay, you're right. I need to do it. So from that point on, I had a discussion with Tommy as well. And we set up an event called Cuatro de Mayo to help support a local Mexican restaurant the day before Cinco de Mayo. And it's like a warm up to Cinco de Mayo, right? Correct. Yeah. And it's Kansas exactly. City. Kansas City is does a big Cinco de Mayo. They've got yeah, they a love following. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, honestly, in Kansas City, Cinco de Mayo is just a really good excuse to go party, right? Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it didn't matter if you were Spanish, Latin, Mexican. It didn't matter. Great opportunity to go out and hang out. So... Mm-hmm. So you did Quattro de Mayo. So you, you were a little ahead of the crowd. Always better to do like Quattro de Mayo than it was like Seis de Mayo, right? It's better to do right. better do before than it is the, the day after, right? People are still fresh, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you did Quattro de Mayo on, on May 4th. What day is May 4th? What was it this year? Um, it was a Saturday. Good day, too. Perfect. Yeah. Right. Good day. Yeah. So, and honestly, some people probably started Cinco de Mayo on Cuatro de Mayo anyway. Yeah. So you were just, you were giving them a good excuse to, to do that. So what were your first steps in doing your event? Like what, Um, what did you have to do first? So first thing I did was pull out the book, um, from event mastery and I just went with it step by step from that book. Obviously, I had Nicole and you in the class and some people to lean on and ask questions to. But really what I did was just I pulled out that book and I said, okay, what does he say is the first thing to do? I've taken the class multiple times. I know how the process goes, but I'm very strong on checking things off a list. That helps me accomplish them and blocking that time out. Um, so I went about it that way. And I just step one, I went from step one in the book and I said, what's the name of my event? And so I brought it up in a class and I heard a bunch of ideas getting tossed around. May the 4th be with you was one of the more shocking ones. Yeah. Um, But the people that I know, like my age group and the people that I've met, they enjoy drinking. So I figured a happy hour would be perfect. It's like a warm up for Cinco de Mayo. I knew they were all going to go out and have a good time on Cinco de Mayo. So I said, I might as well represent this restaurant a day before so they can come here the next day and enjoy it too. So. Yeah, I bet the restaurant was really happy too. Like what what made you decide which restaurant to choose? It was like a, a Friday night and they closed, this restaurant closed at 10 p.m. It was like 10.06. We were like, darn, it's right next to our house. Um, So we decided to go to Taco Bell. That's like our go-to spot. Bringing back great memories. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, so we're heading to Taco Bell to have like a Taco Bell and a movie night. Um, And then we look to our left as we're driving in this little plaza, we just see an open sign and it's like lighting up and it's snowing out at this time. So there's literally nobody out. Um, and we're like, well, it said it's open. So we gave them a call and the owners were happy. They were like, yeah, please come in, please come in. Like, we'd love to have you. We were like, okay. Um, we showed up. We were the only ones in the restaurant. It was the owner and the owner's husband. Uh, they were there. Sandy, she's amazing. And they just started talking to us. We got like the first class treatment, uh, got got all the fresh food. Um, and the owner gave us a couple of free shots. Just like, here you go. Thanks for coming in. Um, feel free to share about this place. And immediately we gained a connection with them. My girlfriend and I, we love to form connections with the restaurants because we love to go out to eat. Um, and it all started from there. We just really enjoyed them. They had their kid there hanging out with them while they're working still. And we knew they were working hard. So we wanted to help support them. That was where you ended up having the Quattro de Mayo? Yeah, it is. It is. Is it a Mexican food restaurant or was it the American? Uh, Tequila's Restaurant Bar and Grill. Oh, there you go. What a great fit for... You know, you already had the restaurant picked out before you even really took step two. You know, I mean, you were ready to go with Quattro de Mayo, great name. And then we needed a Mexican restaurant. Boom, you're you're already in. And you had a relationship with the owner. So you didn't have to go build the relationship with the owner like we talk about some in Event Mastery. Right. But I love that. Okay. So you got the date. What time did you do it at? So they had a happy hour naturally that went on from three to six. So I decided to do a four to six and it ended up working out perfectly because I called it the happy hour because I was offering first drinks. There was also a happy hour on top of the first drinks. 
So uh, love that. So you're you're buying the first drink, but the first drink's discounted because it's already a happy hour. And I'm yeah. guessing, like, do they do appetizers and stuff like that? Is it like half price or or something like that? Chips and salt. Uh, there was a yeah, the chips and dip. They were all half off. 